All right, folks, welcome to uh, STA 3163. This whole session is going to be about running through all your responsibilities in the course, but showing you physically where everything is so that you don't have to search all over just to get to the things that you need. It will tell you about a studying strategy that will help you out a lot. You know, there's a long history to all of this, okay? Uh, I've taught this course for about 10 years now. And uh, back in the day, students were complaining how hard it was. And I guess that difficulty began with STA 2023 when they had only four weeks to pick up a whole new kind of mathematics. No, it's not algebra, it's not geometry, it's not trig, it's not anything that they have taken in high school or even as they have taken college algebra with us, uh, that didn't prepare them for statistics, which is applied probability, right? You have to have some probability or statistics or AP statistics, some of that background in order to, you know, in order to be reasonably uh, prepared for this course, right? So you have to pick up a new map back in STA 2023, uh, a new kind of math, and now it carries forward to STA 3163, the more advanced course, the follow-up course, and it's even tougher. So, so I have decided to restructure this class. Um, you really don't have to take the route of understanding the mathematics of this, right? You just have to know how to operate software. You just need to know how to understand the conceptual parts of it. Understand what kind of statistical objects you're dealing with, right? Statistical summary numbers, what are they telling you? Be able to operate a software to get to the right answers. Be able to explain what the answers mean to other people. If you can do that pretty well, then you should be able to do well in this course. It's, it's more on a, a conceptual level. Now, that doesn't prevent all of these, all of you students who want to get more in depth into statistics, who want to take graduate courses in statistics from learning from the textbook and also from my supplementary health materials the more theoretical end of things, right? But it's it's kind of like now at your option. I teach the theoretical end of things as well, but I also teach the practical end of things as well. If you know how to solve problems with the software, then you are gonna be able to do pretty well in this course. So let's get started. Okay, let's go to our course webpage, all right? And, um, and I'll show you where everything is, okay? All right, um, so let's even, I can, let's open a new window. I'm going to the Kaiser, uh, the Blackboard, Kaiser University Blackboard. Uh, unlike other online courses, unlike other online courses, most of your time will not be spent here, okay? But, of course, if you want to find out. Okay, so now let's take a look at Meet Your Instructor link. You see yours truly when I was uh, about 10 years younger. You know, I started teaching 10 years ago, right? I said, and yes, I do have my doctorate in statistics. Um, we will have our regular Kaiser Live Hours Monday at 8 p.m. EST. And this Saturday um, at 4, maybe I'll try a Saturday at 3 first, right? Uh, at 3 p.m. So I'm going to change it over here to 3 p.m. EST. That is more like an office hour, you know, it, no lectures there, just any, just about 45 minutes, 3 to 3.45 p.m. on that day to answer any questions you might have on the course, give you some homework help, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a little bit of my background, you can read it. I, I was not, never a concentrationist. I, I couldn't concentrate on anything. Uh, and so my bachelor's was electrical engineering, got into uh Business administration and my PhD in statistics. And yeah, statistics. Uh, and I'm a little bit on the ecosystems informatics, the green, uh, the green world type of a situation. I was also, I also tried to get my uh, advanced degree in finance and I was ABD there. Um, so, so I'm quite broad and I do welcome all the students with all these different areas where whether you're nursing, whether you're in, um, criminal justice, whichever major you're in, I welcome you and uh, please bring in uh, examples from your specific fields to help us out, to, 
to make us understand statistics on a broader level, right? Statistics can be applied to many, many different areas. And uh, so now here's my contact number. I am uh, in St. Paul right now. By Thursday, I'll be permanently moved into South Dakota, moving. Uh, and uh, so we're we're both cities that I that I'm in, that I will be in, and that I'm in right now, uh, are Central Time. Are in Central Time. So I'm an hour behind you. Calling me and texting me is one good way to get a hold of me. You can also send me an email. You too at kaiseruniversity.edu. Ask me any questions. You're welcome to do any of them. And uh, because we're in an online environment, one of the most difficult things is for us to have consistent and reliable communication. And believe you me, that is one of the keys to our successes here. It is a tough class. I have restructured it so that it's not as tough as before. Okay. But you have to listen to my instructions. And one of the ways that to, for me to get the instructions through is for us to be able to communicate rather frequently. All right. Okay. All right. So then we will go ahead and go to the syllabus and just check out what you're responsible for when we're using Triola's 14th edition. And we'll cover chapters eight and nine during the first week. Chapter 10 during the second week. Chapter 12, we'll skip chapter 11. It's chapter 12 and parts of 13. Sections 13.1 to 13.3 together with chapter 12 during the third week. And the fourth week is actually the lightest. 13.4 to 13.7, that's half a chapter. And, and, that, and that's it. Now, we will have to be very versed in high process testing. That is the last thing that you learned from the last course from Basic Statistics, SDA 2023. The rest of this, we'll be doing hypothesis testing all the way throughout. And hypothesis testing is part of, statis uh, is part of statistical decision theory, right? We let data, reality, help us make decisions as to what the probable truthfulness of this world is. And we take advantage of that piece of information and recommend the best course of action Right? Instead of just based on hunches, we now have cold, hard data to help us make those decisions. And this is what this course is about. And as you can tell, that it's got many uses. And if you're good at it, uh, it will give you a lick up on others in terms of promotion, in terms of job prospects. It's really going to help you. And that's why this university in its foresight, okay, requires this is this, this courses for all students from all majors okay so learn this well it's going to help you it's going to help you advance in your career and whatnot which is rather important i would say yeah okay so now let's then take a look at the grade breakdown similar to sda 2023 we grade on a straight curve once again 65 percent or above is a passing grade at d and you're going to see the A's are the 90s to 100, B are the 80s, C's are the 70s, and D, remember, 65% or above. And here's here are the great breakdowns, uh, very similar to SDA 2023, if you can recall. Uh, there'll be four weekly discussions totaling 7.5% of your entire grade. So each week's discussion is worth roughly 2%, right? 2 7.5% divided by 4. And for each discussion, well, how do you get to the discussion, right? Now, you have a left-hand black panel here. Some of you, when you enter in, don't see it like this. And it's because you're on the hidden view, right? So make sure that you locate this rightward pointing arrow, click on it, and then now the black panel reappears, okay? And then you see discussion, discussion link, click on there, and you have the... Week one, week two, week three, week four discussions. You have four weekly discussions here. And every for every single week, each student is required to post one main post of their own, answering these questions or following the instructions here, right? For the, this question. And for each week is different. You can see that there are different questions to answer for each week. One main post. And they should post a main post 
on or before the Thursday of that week. So, for example, we're on the first week right now. We're on a Monday, right? Thursday, by Thursday, you should have posted your main post. And the reason why is because each student is also required to post two replies. Okay, two replies. And so you post them. And but the replies ha are posted after the main post, right? Some student posted their main post, and different students go in there and say, "Hey, that's really neat that you're saying this," uh, and so on and so forth. And then, and they're replying to two fellow classes classmates' main post, and therefore it's going to be afterwards. So we have to give them some time between Thursday and Sunday, the ending Sunday of that week, to to do the replies. Each student is required to post one main post and two replies. So three posts in total, right, for that week, for each week. And because that also is kind of like uh, us taking row for class participation, right, each student should post a minimum of three days, three separate days, right, for that week. For the main post and the two replies, right? So there's an online division rule that every student has to attend the course webpage three days. And this is kind of like your attendance, right? So if you post three days, but if you post all the same days, you'll get points subtracted off. So do you post on three separate days, right? The easiest thing to do if you have Microsoft Word is to write your response in the Microsoft Word first, right? And then use the grammar and spell checker in here, right? So uh, if you have review here, click on review and you have the editor, right? On the latest version. And then you use the word, after typing your response to your main post or your replies, you use the word to check all your spelling and grammar with the editor, okay? Okay, so you do do that. And, and then after you've corrected all your spelling and grammar, just cut and paste into the discussion here, right? So for example, I would go discussion one. So in the, the magic, the, the magic sauce on everything, to be able to find everything, is you would, don't, don't click on the pictures, click on the words. You see, week one discussion, click on the words. And then if you want to create thread, click on the words again. Right, so after you do the spelling and grammar checking, you can cut and paste that entire word document to here because there's no spelling and grammar checking here inside the Blackboard app, right? So you do it in Word and cut and paste because I do take points off for poor grammar and also for misspelling of words, right? So then you, you do the main post. So for instance, during week one, right? National polls are often conducted by asking opinions of 2,000 adults nationwide and using them to further opinions of all adults in the nation. Explain who is the sample and who's the population. So the, the question here is, go ahead and uh, find a poll. And most students just surf the web to find a poll, right? And TV, magazine, or from the internet. And then tell me with that information, you know, maybe just one short paragraph describing what the poll is about. But really, you have to answer the, the points here are given for identifying what the population and the sample is for the poll of your choice that you have chosen to talk about, to write about, okay? And then remember to use APA formatting at the tail end of this so that you can tell me the source of uh, whatever that poll information is given, right? So type in the Microsoft Word first, use the spell checker, the grammar checker to correct everything. Then when everything is corrected, copy and paste it into this, you know, you just create create thread here, right? And then you can then post your main post. And here's a student, Anne-Marie, and you know, she's already posted this. So now your student is also required to reply to two posts, right? So then click on reply here. Click on reply like this, and then you can just start talking about uh, what Anne-Marie has written about, okay? And 
What I want you to concentrate on, yeah, it's fine to compliment your classmates for their hard work and you like their post and, and you're, you, you know, you're appreciative for what they've done. But that probably doesn't help us with understanding statistics, right? So my requirement for these replies is that you must contain, you must write about at least one statistical point, right? Don't just say, Oh, Anne-Marie, you've done well here. I really appreciate what you've done. You made the concepts very clearly. Which concepts did he make so clearly? What statistical reason why you like her post, right? So write about one statistical reason so that we can start engaging ourselves in statistics, okay? So then uh, don't just say that you appreciate it with others, Palestinians post, just tell me why based on a statistical reason, you like it, okay? So now one may post two replies on three separate days, okay? And then you'll now be eligible for the full complement of points. And I'll talk about extra credit a little bit later, which also concerns these discussions. Uh, so keep a note of that, but yes, I do give extra credit. All right, so now let's go back to the syllabus. You know uh, how to work the discussions. Okay, now MSL means my stat lab. Now remember when you were taking college algebra with us and maybe you even remember when you were taking STA 2023 basic statistics with us that you know you did have to register for Pearson's my stat lab and you have to do so again in this course. We'll talk about that later, but let's go to the final and the post test first. Uh, they are embedded underneath the week four folder. Okay, so if you go back to this black side panel here, Click on week four, right? And now you're underneath the week four folder. Scroll, you, you know, you scroll the vertical bar down, maybe a little ways here, and you see the week four final exam. And you click on the words. Once again, to get anywhere, click on the words. And you see that with a 44, for four hours, right? You'll be given 20, uh, 20 questions to answer. And the due date of this, uh, is normally on a Sunday, but I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a one day break. So I'll set it right here. We are on the 20th. This is our first week, second week, right? Third, fourth, and usually still on the 17th. But I'm going to give you a one day break just in case you need that extra day. So it's going to be due December the 18th, end of day, which is 11:59 p.m. EST. Or our due times that are usually at 11.59 p.m. ESTs. And so it's going to be on the Monday after the fourth Sunday uh, at 11.59 p.m. EST. That's going to be due time. So I'm going to do this over here as well, right? Um, second week, third week, fourth week, 18th, end of day. All right, so you see that for sure our post-tests, our final, are do there and so now um these exams are comprehensive they test you everything on the course which have its good parts which have its bad parts right comprehensive finals which means that even the earlier easier parts of the course are retested again you've seen those test questions already so uh you 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 probably won't score too badly on it but the hard part of course you have to review everything Okay, so that's there are pros and cons to that, but that's how we set up for the final and the post test. The final is worth twenty percent. The post test is worth five. The post test is rapid fire. You will have seen most of the questions on the test. We want to test you in an hour and a half to see if you can actually get all the twenty questions right. Four hours for the final. Uh, you should finish each one in one setting because you can save. Whereas you can save the answers. But once you get out of the exam, the clock keeps on ticking, right? So you really should finish both exams on one sitting. You only have one attempt to get a high score there. So make sure that you spend enough time studying and preparing for each one of these, okay? Basically, um, that's why the fourth week is kind of light. You only have half a chapter to go through. You have to prepare well for the final exam and post-test, and you can't take it twice. You can only take it once each, 
All right, so only one shot. All right, so now you know where those are and you know how much uh, grade they're, what percentage of the grade they're worth. Okay, so let's go back to syllabus again. And so now these guys are actually on the Blackboard page and the discussions are on the Blackboard page. Now, for the homework and the tests here, my stat lab, right? We should go to Pearson's MyStat Lab. So now we can go there and then we'll look at the mechanics of it. On the black panel, there's uh, MyStat Lab underneath the weekly folders. You can click on it and get there. Okay, there's MyStat Lab. But you don't necessarily have to uh, go through Blackboard to get to MyStat Lab. If you just open up a browser and then type in www.mystatlab.com, okay? You hit enter and you can get there as well. All right, so you can go there either one of two ways. Um, the first time you are there, you have to click on students. <clears throat> and then after you click on student, it's gonna require you to give them three pieces of information. All right, um, so first your email address and then your instructor course ID. Now, as I'm reading two sections and not just one, because uh, every, uh, Kaiser University full-time instructor does have to take on two sections at least once in, in per per term per uh, quarter per four month quarter. Okay, so then this is my turn to take on two courses. So if you if you go to my Kaiser Live my courses, you see that I lead two sections. Okay. The, the Kaiser Life that we're in, your students from SDA 3162G4, 41120 section, but then there's also a 31120 section that I lead. The students here, the both students who are present here are from the 41120 section, but as I'm doing this recording for both sections, I have to tell you two different course IDs. So um, Heather, Chris, you're from this section. So the course ID that you get is now we go back to the Blackboard page. Once again, we're looking at the, the, the left black panel. Getting started above the weekly folders. Click on that and scroll down a little bit. Your course ID is CHU31061. Okay. You might want to write it down now, but it's underneath the getting started link, right? You can, it's permanently embedded here so that you can see it. But the registration course code. For you is two three one zero six one. Now, for those of you who are in the other section, right? You will actually be in, underneath this course web page. Same thing. You click on getting started, but your course ID will be different. You should register for CHU five six five three seven instead. Okay. Now you probably want to register yourself in the right section because if you don't. When it's time for the MyStat Lab program to automatically port over all your grades to Blackboard by the end of the course, if you register for the wrong section, then they cannot port it, port it automatically. And I have to do everything by hand. And when I do things by hand, you might see delays in the grade getting reported, all those things that are not that nice. Okay. Um, so, so make sure that you register the right section. Once again, for the 31120 section, we're holding our Kaiser Live session on Tuesdays, right? If you click on meet your instructor, their regular Kaiser Live session, Zoom Live sessions on Tuesday at 8 p.m., whereas this 41120 section, Monday, our Kaiser Live weekly sessions on Monday at 8 p.m. So now these people, you would want to, Register under CHU 56537, 56537. You know where to find it. Okay, right here. Okay. But for students who are attending currently the, the this Kaiser Live session, belonging to the 41120 section, okay, your course ID is CHU 31061 instead. Okay. All right. So, yes, you will have to. Give them these pieces of information. And now uh, for the third one is a payment method. 
You don't have to go through the Kaiser University Bookstore to get there. You can pay right here, and you'll be just paying Pearson directly. Whereas if you go to the Kaiser University Student Bookstore, you have two choices. You can either buy the physical textbook alone. In that case, you'll have to pay here, right? Or you could buy the bundle, which is more expensive, which is the more expensive one between the two, where you get both the physical textbook and an SS code. The SS code should have been mailed to your physical address already in an envelope. And inside is an SS code. So if you enter in the SS code here, then you'll be led to successful registration. You can just register right away. Now, if you either haven't gone through the Kaiser University Student Bookstore, you don't even have the physical textbook, or you bought just the physical textbook from the bookstore, then you have to pay here with either credit card. They will also accept the debit card. It doesn't say, but yes, credit or debit cards are okay. Or if you don't trust this outfit, you can go through PayPal, okay? Uh, so it's up to you which payment method, method, which payment method you want to pay with, okay? And then afterwards, you'll be registered for the course, okay? And now, after you've registered for the course, you just go and sign in now. So then you can sign in, put your username, usually your email address and your password, and then you go and sign in. And of course, my page looks a little different from yours. You can see that 56537, the students uh, here, uh, and the which are the 31120 section students. And the 41120 section students, the, the, the two students here are from there. Your course code is 31061. And uh, you see that we have basically uh, so you, if you click in, in the, the words again, then you'll get in. And now we start talking about the assignments and the due dates. All right, so assignments. Okay, now even the homework assignments. So the homework assignments, 7.5% of them. Chapters 8, 9, 10, 12, and parts of 13, and chapter 13. So you really have a homework assignment for week 4. Week three, you see it. Week two, and then week one, you have two chapters. You see, eight, and nine. So one, two, three, four, five chapters. Not as heavy as SDA twenty twenty three when we have eight chapters and a little bit from ten, chapter ten. But so there you have five chapters, but the material are more difficult. Now this would comprise of. Um, so if we go back. Uh, let me see. Okay, if we go back, we'll just zoom here. Okay, if we go back to this and we look at the courses, okay, and of course yours look a little different from mine, but we go back to the left panel, right, and we go to the syllabus once again. These are the my style app homeworks that work seven point five percent of your grade. It doesn't seem a lot, but it's probably the very most important section. I mean, grade wise, the tests are worth the most. Eighty five percent of your grade are based on the four weekly tests and the post tests, right? So you have to be able to do well on the test. But where do you learn how to do well on the test? It's from the homework assignments. So that's where the battles really are fought. That's 7.5%, not a significant portion of your grade, but without going through those homework assignments and learning how to do the problems, any student would probably do very poorly on the tests, right? So you must conquer these homework assignments first, uh, push them, uh, push your grade up to close to 100% for them, before you try to attempt the test or fair, okay? And there are gonna be homework help videos to help you do the homework, so I'll show you later where they'll be located. But for every homework assignment, you try to uh, do really well on it. Okay, so now let's go back into to the MyStat lab and take a, take a look at the mechanics of this. 
First of all, though, the due dates. So you have week one homework. And so there's a soft due date that is this coming Sunday on the 26th at 11.59 p.m. EST, Eastern Time. Okay. And it's going to be due on this coming Sunday. And it, well, the reason why I say it's a soft due date is because you can still get points even after you're late. But you just will have to take some late penalties for the portion that you're late by. Okay, so let's say that, you know, throughout this week, you finish all of chapter eight. Chapter nine has 20 questions. You've done everything up to problem number 17. One through 17, you're on time. For number 18 and 19, you're one day late. For number 20, you're two days late. It's just a, just a hypothetical situation, right? Just to illustrate how the late penalties work. Well, the portion that is late will have to take a 5% per day late penalty. So because 18, questions 18 and 19 from chapter 9 are one day late, each one of them will have to take a 5% deduction. Because number 20 is two days late, you have to take a 10% deduction, you know, because it's two times 5% per, per day, right? Oh, I'm sorry, 5% per day late amounting to two times five percent ten percent total late penalty for number for number 20. so for numbers 18 and 19 you'll take a five percent deduction each and then for number 20 you'll take the ten percent deduction because it's that's two days late okay so do try to finish the homework assignments on time right and and that's basically it. And then after you're done with those homeworks, ideally on the 26th, you see that test one is due on the following day. Now, unlike the test four comprehensive final during week four and the post-test, you have two shots for all these tests here, test one, two, and three, to post a good score. My stat lab, will automatically give you the highest score between the two attempts. So even if you don't do so well on the first attempt, but you come back and put up a great score on your second attempt, my stat lab will duly record your great score as the de facto, as the real test score. It will always be the highest score between the two, not the average, not whatsoever. The highest score between the two attempts, that will be your official test score. Okay, for test one, two, and three, not so for test four and post-test, where you only have one attempt to put up a high score back on Blackboard. All right, so how would the, how are the due dates structured for the tests? Well, you see that, for example, test one, maybe a lot of students have just finished all the homeworks on time on this coming Sunday. The first attempt then is due on the Monday night, the night after. Okay, so now we can go, that's the first attempt. Now, if you miss the first attempt, then you only have one attempt left. The second attempt is due on the Thursday, three days later, on the week after. So this is week one material, chapters eight and nine. Week one test one is due on Monday night of the second week. And then the second attempt will be due on the Thursday night of the second week. So you can see the, the, the schedule here. And the rest of the schedules are staggered similarly, right? Week two homework, chapters 10, only 20 questions for chapter 10, but they're pretty hard questions, okay? Uh, due on Sunday of the end of the second week, December the 3rd. Week two tests two, the first attempt due on Monday of the third week, Right, of the following week, and then the second attempt due on the Thursday of the third week, December the 7th, All right? So it staggers similarly, correspondingly, as we move along, right? And so now you have the week three homework, right, due on Sunday of the end of the third week, test three due on Monday, right? of the fourth week, and once again, the second attempt due on Thursday of the fourth week. 
three days later, December the 14th, okay? And then now there's an edge condition here as we come to the end of the course. Um, <clears throat> week four homework due on Sunday of the end of the fourth week. And then the final in the post test due on Monday of the after the, the course, after the Sunday, right? I said it on the Monday after, on December the 18th, as you just saw me do earlier. Set the, set the ending times. 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, right? Monday on the December the 18th. That's when both the final and the post and the post test are due. Okay. Now, <clears throat> because you only have one shot to post a good score on the final, we give you a practice final here in my stat lab. Okay. And I'll set it on December the 17th, but uh, maybe I can set it on December the 18th, 18th too, right here. Okay. So that it's still on the Monday. And they don't count for anything. There are 40 questions here. And they don't count for anything. So I just set it for the 18. They don't count for anything. Uh, but it's there to uh, give you an idea of what's on the final and what's on the post-test. I urge you to do that as a practice, even though it doesn't count for any points, so that you do, you'll be able to do better on the final and the post-test. So they have good practice on what some of the questions might come up on the final and the post-test, all right? So now you understand all the due dates and, and everything else. Now, perhaps even more importantly, are the mechanics on how to do homework and how to control the test. I'm about to outline that for you. Okay, so let's go to the assignment views again. Okay, so now let's say that we're doing chapter eight, right? <clears throat> So I click on chapter eight and you'll see this. And initially you cannot do anything with the questions. The questions are blacked out. You can't click on it, it doesn't do anything. And it's really because my stat lab, Pearson, wants you to watch all the videos um, on the top left before they light up the questions. Personally, um, I say go and watch them but don't try to follow everything they say, particularly on the use of software. They're going to try to get you to use that clumsy program, Stack Crunch. Okay. Stack Crunch is written by, uh, you know, it's written for all the textbooks out there. It's not, it, it is not optimized for our textbook, right? I would rather that you use, so, so forget about using Stack Crunch. It's a, it's a really hard, clumsy program. Do not use it. Uh, many often times you have to pull up multiple routines just to solve one problem. I'd rather that you use the simple program, Stack Disk, that is written by a textbook author, Triola. It's written by his organization. All the homework questions banks, all the test bank questions came from Triola. He knows how he asks questions. So when you use his software, Stack disk instead of stack crunch. You know, many oftentimes it's much more simple. I mean, it's it's just much simpler. All you have to do is pull up one routine and you, you would be able to solve an entire problem. Okay, so after you click on these, and this is true for every single homework assignment, now the questions light up on the to the right hand side. Right, question one, two, three, four, five, six. So now let's say that we try to do question one. So now we're gonna we we'll start we're starting on the homework. Okay, and so we say, well, the p-value of this that must most strongly is to pick the minimum, right? P-value being the smaller it is, the stronger the evidence is in the sample. And strongly supports the alternative that the method uh, is not effective. So this is going to be a wrong answer. These two are going to be right, okay? So I'm going to check the answer. Right? <clears throat> when you got the answers correct, it'll fill up in the background with blue. And if it's not correct, it will be kept white, right? And you notice that I haven't got all the points yet. So if I go to the next question, like question two, right? And I come back to here, you see that I only got 2.67 of the possible four points because I got one of the answers wrong. 
And the one the one that is wrong is the is not, right? <clears throat> so what happens is that if you either change it right on the spot, right? It'll give you the points back, right? And now you get your four out of four points back. So basically, and sometimes you 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 know the, the pop-up window will appear. And you can click on a similar question to restart the whole question. When you restart the whole question, these numbers change on you. Okay? These numbers change on you. But the rest of the words are exactly the same. So it's basically the same problem, but now with different set of numbers for you to plug in uh, to, 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 to do well. You can also click on this try again. And you see what I mean. And for this time, for this particular question, numbers don't even change, but in general, the numbers do change, right? Okay, so so this time, if I decided to, you know, um, get it right all the way, and you know, so you say next question, well done, right? So you basically can always retry by clicking something on the bottom right hand corner, or maybe it's a pop up menu. Uh, a pop-up window, I should say, a pop-up pane where you can click on try again or another question, something like that, to retry that problem when you haven't gotten all the points, okay? And so you basically have an infinite number of tries that you can do to get the full complement of points on the homework, right? Plus... I haven't posted it on the Kaiser Blackboard yet, but you know this is a new course, right? But let's go back to a an old term of STA thirty one sixty three that I taught, maybe just two months ago, right? This one G two, and underneath the announcements link or the Kaiser Life link are these homework help videos, right? So we're recording this part one must few video showing everything. Yes, every student should view it, or else they could get lost in the course, right? They could get, they could become lost. So this video is a must view for everybody. The video, the very video that I'm making right now. Okay, so watch them, and you know, register for the right course and so on. But starting from week one, Kaiser Life Part Two, you see, these are help videos on how to use Dactis to do chapter eight problems. And week one, Kaiser Life Part 3, how to use that is to do chapter 9 homework problems. So I basically use two types of programs, Disk and Excel. Most of you, Disk is free for you to use. You can download it. I'll teach you how to download it a little bit later. Excel, most people have. But if you don't have Excel, you students out there, contact me, and I'll try to get you to use Google Sheets. Now, Excel, whereas Excel you have to pay for, Google Sheets is free for you to use. The command inside Google Sheets are exactly identical to Excel. So you, you won't have any problems in this class, okay? Even if you can't, if you don't have Excel, you can use Google Sheets, okay? So I'll tell you how to set them up. Make sure you get in contact with me, and I'll help you with Google Sheets, how to set up. But that's those are the only two programs that you need, right? And this is a, another reason, and perhaps the very, very most important reason why you don't want to use Stack Crunch. Is that when you're using Stack Crunch, you're sort of on your own. You don't have any help, homework help videos to help you go through all the homework problems, right? But if you're using Stack Disk, which is a simpler, quicker, faster, more streamlined, better program to use, remember your textbook is Triola, right? So if you use the software, there are no additional translations in terminology. All the if it's small letter n meaning sample size in the textbook, it's small letter n meaning sample size in stack disk. In stack crunch, you might have to do additional translation, which are additional issues, obstacles to confuse people, right? Because the terminology doesn't totally agree with the textbook, although most of them do. Um, but, and then stack crunch doesn't have these, if using stack crunch, you cannot, I mean, these homework help videos are not very accessible to you. I mean, you just, because inside, I'd be using Statis to solve all your homework problems, okay? Every single one of them, unless the problem, problem seven is a duplicate of problem six, and I'm just showing you how to do problem six. Sometimes I'll skip over seven, 
because I'll tell you seven is basically the identical problem. But basically, I do every single one of the problems for you, homework problems for you. And all you kind of have to do is to follow along and do exactly what I do, right? In order for you to actually be able to solve the question, you know, the right routines to do that. And I do that for chapters eight and nine, and then chapter 10, right? It's here. All right. And then chapter uh, 12, the week three homework is here. Week four homework is going to be here. So I give you all the homework help I need to I basically use stat this to solve every single one of the problems. There's just one catch. My stat lab gives everybody a different set of numbers, right? But that actually shouldn't face you too much at all because let's say that you're doing this problem. If I enter this problem in the top slot of stat disk, like this number 10 for me, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's in the fourteenth position after the first thirteen words on the first paragraph, and I put that one onto the top slot of stack disk. Okay, your number, even though it's a different number than ten, probably maybe eleven, maybe twelve, maybe ten point five. I don't know, but it will be located in the same spatial position. It will be. The 14th position after the first 13 months. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It will be this, the number will be located, though it's a different number, at the 14th position after the first 13 months to put in the top, top slot of stack disk. Okay, so there's a spatial one to one correspondence between my version of the homework and yours, so that you can easily follow along, right? So there really shouldn't be too much of a problem for you to push your homework grades, each one of your chapter homework grades to close to 100%. Maybe 98% is good enough, okay, um, for you, and then you can stop. But you can push your homework grades, each one of them, instead of spending an entire day on a single chapter, maybe it's going to only take you three hours or four hours, right? a drastic reduction of time in terms of the time that you need to spend on your homework. Okay, that's what those homework help videos are for, okay, is to help you. And they're located in two places. They're located in announcements where the videos are posted in descending order with the latest videos on top and the earliest videos on the bottom, okay? But if you click on the Kaiser Life link instead of the announcements link here, the same videos are posted in the reverse order, in ascending order, with the oldest videos on top and the uh, latest videos on the bottom. So depending on which style you like, you can click on either announcements or Kaiser Live link. Those will be where the homework help videos will be. All right. And now you shouldn't have too much trouble with a lot with basically all the homework assignments. Okay. Now. After that, how do you prepare for tests? Okay. All the test questions are drawn from the homework questions. So picture, let's say if you have Microsoft Word or something like that. After you got the question right, like what I did here, number one, you take a screenshot of this question, right? You go, you're inside, I just opened up Microsoft Word here. It's Microsoft Word program, okay? And you go insert, okay, insert screenshot, screen clipping, okay. Click on that. And then you select the window of the question wording and the multiple choice answers right into Microsoft Word. And you might even want to maximize it. But then you hit enter. And now you type in the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get to the right answer. Right? And you know, you should take very good notes here because you're going to use this information on the test, right? On the test, it's open book, open notes, open open stat disk. 
as long as you are the ones who typed it. Now you can't ask other people to do this work for you. That would be that would be considered cheating. Okay. You cannot serve the web for answers. You cannot do that. But after you've done these homework assignments and got it right, and you make your own notes like this, and you do that for every single homework question. So for instance, um, chapter eight has 20 homework questions, and you can get them to 100% reasonably well. I mean, it won't cost you too much time. Chapter nine also has 20 homework questions. You have 40 homework questions. 20 of them will be drawn to test one. Right? Same problem type, okay? All right, so now picture that you type in these, well, let's call these hard copy notes, right? Because a lot of students might want to print them off after they've got this Microsoft Word, they print them off and then they, when they take the test, they have this hard copy notes to search through, right? And let's call these hard copy notes. You do that for every single homework question, so all 40 of them. And after you've done with all 40 of them, these questions, the screenshots and also the step-by-step -step instructions, as you type in step-by-step -step instructions on how to get to the right answer, then there's really nothing else to prepare for for the test. You've got all the potential test questions, how to do every single one of them, you know, all typed in, right? And if you don't want to miss any of the test questions, because any of the 20 can be drawn to test, right? You do the hard copy notes for all 40 of those or more questions, okay? There's one catch, the test questions might change the order of the wording on you and also change the set of numbers. Now, from my homework help video section to your version of the homework, the order of the wording will be exactly the same, right? You're given different numbers, but the numbers are located in the same spatial positions and therefore it's easy to track. On the homework assignments, on the, I'm sorry, on the test themselves, the order of the wording can change on you and also the, 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 the text themselves. So you have to be mindful about what kind of statistical objects you're dealing with, what kind of answers the, the question wants, okay? And, and so on and so forth in order to be able to, to really understand the, the test question well enough. But of course, these step-by-step -step instructions on how to do them will help you immensely. If you're mindful of the fact that, well, yeah, the second paragraph becomes the first paragraph, first becomes the second, but you're, they're still talking about same statistical objects asking for the same types of answers, so you can still track them. And then there's another way to try and go away for the numbers, right? I'm going to have you download the status for all your PC Windows users, and I'll also talk about the online version of this uh, for you, for those of you using MacBook and Google Chrome. Right, but here's the here's a status program. If you pull up analysis hypothesis testing, let's say a chapter eight problem, right? Okay, and then if you so implicitly, status has already given you a great deal of hint. It tells you that if you take care of all these five items, you you enter in the right numbers for each of these, and then you choose the right alternative hypothesis, one of the three. Then after you hit evaluate, out comes the answer. Okay, so now, beat these variable names to the left, significance, claim, proportion, sample size, number of successes, they are the nouns in the English grammar. These numbers are the adjectives that modify these nouns. Okay, so now you understand the English grammar, you understand the English language, that the nouns and the adjectives that modify them are usually located on the same sentence very close to each other, right? So one of the things that if you were to take care of these five items, you look for significance, the keyword in the question wording, where you find significance. The number that is close to it, because it's the adjective that modifies that noun, the number that is close to significance is then probably gonna be the number that you need to enter in here, right? That's the correct number to enter in. And after you take care of the all these five items, and the and the problem uh, and the routine already tells you all you have to do is take care of being correct of these five items. You hit evaluate. Now you get the right answer. Now 
your hard copy notes over here will have to tell you, you have to tell yourself here as you're making the step-by-step -step instructions on which part of the output you would pull up. Maybe you just pull up P value, compare against the significance value. When P is high, the null will fly. When P is low, the null must go, you know, that sort of thing to decide whether you reject the null or not, right? So that comes from viewing my homework help videos and learning how to solve these problems, right? The, the, the homework help videos will tell you. But here, that basically is what's going on here. You have to also, on your step-by-step -step instructions, on which part of the output to pull and how you make the decision, right? p value is greater than significance level, fail to reject the null, fail to accept the alternative. If p value is less than or equal to significance level, then reject the null and accept the alternative, support the alternative. You have to kind of write these notes in so that you know what to do on the test, right? So now, you know, since you don't know which 20 of them are going to be drawn, you have to do it for all 40 or more questions for week one. But after you've done them, right, there's nothing else to prepare for. You won't have to memorize anything. And on the test, you know exactly what you're going to do. You won't even get nervous. You won't even have to be nervous. You know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to problem match based on the question wording, right? That's number one, question number one you got. Number two you got, oh, number three, just hypothetically speaking, you have a little bit of some trouble, right? But you know that it was drawn somewhere from the homework. You took one look at it and say, well, it's so a one sample problem and it only involves one group. Chapter eight has all the one sample problems. Chapter nine has all the two sample problems. So since it's a one sample problem, test number one, question number three must have been drawn from Chapter eight, you look right through your chapter eight hard copy notes, right? So, so here on top of that, I might have not have told you, but maybe what you do is say, this is chapter eight, question number one, so that you know it's from chapter eight, right? And then after you do these, you're done with these hard copy notes, chapter eight, number, question number two, right? And so you're looking right down the list here. Question number one doesn't match. Question one, not it. Question two doesn't match the current test question of interest. Not it. Question number three, not it. Number four, not it. Oh, number five. Number five, talk about the same stuff. Is asking for the same statistical objects. Even the multiple choice answers at the bottom are similar to one another. Test number one, question number three was drawn from chapter eight, homework question number five. And right underneath the screenshot of question number five that you just matched the problem with, with the test are your step-by-step -step instructions on how to get to the right answer. <clears throat> now you can reuse what you've learned from your homework to your test rather seamlessly. So, <clears throat> so the idea is you've got to make sure that you know how to do all the questions of the homework. Even though they're worth just 7.5% of your grade, you make all these hard copy notes for every single one of the homework questions. Okay, take them into the test, right? And the test, you'll be doing it electronically, right? The test, you know, will be here, right? And then, you know, you can sort of, sorry, okay, let's, let's kind of let that take up half the screen. And now you're going you're gonna to open up this Microsoft uh, Chapter 8 hard copy notes, Chapter 9 hard copy notes. That's an electronic file, right? You save this in Microsoft Word document as electronic files to do the question comparisons. Okay, and then now you should be able to do well on the test too. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is very applied, very applied statistics type approach. I'm happy you build up your own repository of questions that you know how to solve by the hard copy notes. After you graduate from this class, you keep on adding to this, right? As you encounter more and more statistics problems, as you learn how to solve more and more of them. You build this out so that you know how to solve more and more statistics questions, right? But this is, don't throw this away. This is your beginning uh, repository for the, for the statistics questions that you know how to solve in the real world, okay? So we're trying to train you to be able to do that. All right. So now a lot of these homework help and all the test taking, a lot of them hinges upon you being able to know how to use that disk. One of the first things that you need to do is to be able to download it and use it. Now, 
Whereas Triola's organization used to be nice in an older version of the textbook, uh, SATIS 12, an older version of the software, they support both Mac and PC users, right? For the 13th edition of SATIS, we only, they only support PC Windows. And the Mac users and the Google Chromebook users have to use the online version of Stactus. So right now, I I hope that you two follow me along. I'm gonna teach you how to download Stactus. So I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna open up just a Google Chrome browser, and then on the address line, please please do that with me. Type in www.stackdisk.com. Right. This is a free and legal program for you to use. It's because you're using Triola's textbook. Okay, so let's type in www.statdisc.com, S-T-A-T-D-I-S-K dot C-O-M, okay? And after you typed in on the address bar, right, then hit enter and you'll go there. So are you, are you, Heather, have you gone? Chris? Have you gone? I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, I'm here. Good. Do you see the, I'm, I, do you see I'm the, with you. Okay. First of all, Heather, you first. Do you have a PC or you have a MacBook or Chromebook? I have a PC. Excellent. You'll be using a downloadable version, just as just as what I show on the video. And and so the students should use the the downloadable version because the help videos are on how to use the downloadable version of StackDisk. When you have to use the other version of StackDisk, there's some minor differences that I'm about to talk about. Chris, do you have a PC or you have a MacBook or a Chromebook? Uh, it's a PC. Okay, so good. Both of you will be using the downloadable versions, okay? Now, after you go to www.status.com, do you see this front panel that I'm seeing the three textbooks? And Yeah. Okay, do you see it, Heather? Yes. Okay, now on the bottom right-hand corner, on the bottom right, you see Status 13 for Windows 10. Click on it. Click on that, and you'll go to download window. Now, notice that it's actually compatible with Windows 7, 8.1, and 10, not just 10. All right. Then click on download for Windows. Okay. So now it's very fast. The download is very fast. I mean, the, the whole program is only 12.9 megabytes. Okay, now click on, open up the Statdisk 13 installer. Left click on it. Click yes. Okay. Accept the agreement. Next. Then leave this checked. Create a desktop shortcut. It's gonna create an icon for you to double click on to launch the program on your Windows desktop. So then leave it checked and then click on next and then click on install. Now, I've already installed it, so I'm not going to click install. But you go and click install if you haven't installed it. And then once it's done installing, which takes about 30 seconds, I think. It's, it's a very small program. Click on install and then click on finish. And then you should be able to see the icon there. Okay, let me know if you're done. Heather, I'm do you done. Think you're done. No trouble. Excellent. Chris? No trouble. Chris? Yeah, it's good. It's good. All right. That's it. And that is a big part of the program. Now, make sure that you use this program instead of, you know, other ones. All right. Now, for those of you who are using MacBook and Google Chrome, you have to use the online version, which is sitting right in front of you. Basically, when I type in www.stackdisk.com, you, you do the same. You go, you go right in here. And initially, you'll see that front panel. Now, if you are using a PC, make sure that you don't click away the front panel or else you have to go to, all right? So, so now I've clicked away the front panel to illustrate um, how to use the online version of stack this so now my front panel is gone i go straight to my online now for those of you who are using pcs and you don't see the front panel 
you have to use another type of browser. Here is a Google Chromebook, right? My front panel, I clicked away and it never comes back once you click it away. So you cannot download stack this once you click it away. So now I have to go to Microsoft Edge, right? So I have to get away from Google Chromebook, right? I mean, it's Google Chrome browser. I have to get away from Google Chrome browser. And now I used a, the Microsoft Edge instead. And I do the same thing, www.statdisk.com. And now the front panel reappears, right? Because, you know, so don't, for, for those of you who are downloading PC, you want to keep the front panel alive. Don't touch the front panel, leave it here and click on Statdisk 13 for Windows 10 to do the, to start the installation, okay? So that's for those of you who are using a PC. But if you are using the MacBook or the Chromebook, okay, then what you will be doing is, let's let's go back to Microsoft Edge. I haven't clicked away the front panel yet, like I, like I did for the Google Chrome browser. Okay. All right. So now you would then close this window if your Mac, MacBook or Chromebook user, you click this to get rid of the front panel. It will never appear again in this browser, Microsoft Edge, right? So I clicked it away, right, on the on the Google, my Google Chrome browser, and you'll be using this online version of Stack Disk. And the idea here is that they're really identical programs to the downloadable version. It's got exactly the same functionalities, but they look different. Don't let that confuse you. Okay, here's the downloadable version. Okay, and let's 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 see. Let's compare the two versions. Let's compare them. All right. Okay, so you have analysis here, and then if you click on analysis, see how they look different, right? They don't look exactly the same, right? The clear button is in the middle on the on the online version, middle of the spreadsheet. It's all the way to the left hand side with the downloadable version, right? Even though they look different, they have the same functionalities. They have the same words. So you click on analysis here, right? And you click on analysis here. You see probability distribution. On the probability distribution, are all these you know, normal student T, you know, chi square, F distribution, all that kind of stuff. And then here's the same, right? Probability distribution, normal against normal student T, chi square F, binomial Poisson. So they're really the same program. Right, probability distribution, sample size determination, confidence interval, hypothesis testing, correlation regression, you know, exactly the same. So, on the video, I'll be uh clicking stuff with this downloadable version of Stat Disk, right? And you have to make that translation to the online version, which have basically the same things, same exact words, right? Even though they look different, the words are the same, the functionalities are the same. And therefore, it's their two identical programs, right? Here's analysis, here's data. You know, you click on data on the download version, you basically have the same thing, sort data at columns, basically same thing, data sets. The online version has the 14th edition data sets. Stat just download version only uh, uh, up to the 13th edition, but I'll be using examples from the 13th edition only. So. Uh, 13th edition data sets, 13th edition data sets, basically the same thing. Okay, basically the same. You got, you got basically the same words here. Okay. Body data, foot and height, you know, so 13, how do you say body data, foot and height, body temperatures, basically the same stuff. A everything is identical, except that there are three really minor differences between the two programs. And I'll just... So in order for you to navigate around, uh, I have to sort of tell you, one of the many, many routines, frequently routines that we use for stat disk is in conjunction with my stat lab, all right? So here's my stat lab, and we're gonna go to a place where we have to cut and paste the data over from my stat lab to stat disk, right? Stat disk does all the graphing, and statistical analysis, you know, that's where we make all the all the statistical analysis here. But here are where the 
data is. The data, the numbers themselves will come from my stat lab. So I'm trying to get to an example where uh, I can port the data over rather quickly. Okay. Okay, here's a stat disk display. And you, anything that is blue inside my stat lab, click on it. Some good thing, some goody goodies about the pop up. Right. Okay, so here's an icon indicating there's some data. Okay, so this is here's this is my stat lab. We click on it. Here's the data systolic blood pressure. Kind of like a nursing problem, isn't it? Okay, so now this little blue rectangle, you don't have to hand pack these numbers and into stat disk for statistical analysis. All you have to do is click on this blue little rectangle, open in Excel. Okay, I'll do it a couple of ways. So that, you know, if you don't have Excel, you can just go through clipboard. All right, so here's the data. So I click on it, and now my Excel program should be launching in a minute here. Hmm. Open as Excel, right? Here. Open. Huh. There's something, my, my computer is kind of like acting up here. It should open an Excel. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now that's where the data is. Okay, so let's, let's do it again. First, we click on this little blue rectangle, then we click on open in Excel, and you see this blue thing being active. Then I left click on it, it launches Excel, and now my all my data are here. Okay, now then you would just click and drag to choose all the data, right? So hand packing 100 numbers in is not fun. So just choose these 100 data. Then on the chosen region, right click. And then a pop-up menu will appear. Left click on copy, right? And then you see all the parameters going around and around and around. And now on the downloadable version, right? All you have to do is left click on the one one position, right? Now it won't pay successfully when it's in the cursor view like this. So on the video, on the homework help video, I'll tell you to hit escape. Hit escape to go back to the filled region. Then you can hit control V on the PC, copy things over. And then, or if you wanna right click to bring up the pop-up menu on the first row, make sure that you're on the first row here, or else stat disk isn't gonna work properly. Right click, bring up the pop up menu, left click on paste, that also pasted over. Now, on the online version, it's more finicky. Okay, you left click on it. If it's in the cursor view like this, right? On the on the on the homework out video, since I'm using download version, I'll tell you to hit escape to go to the fill view. The MacBook has a different key for escape maybe it is the same but i don't know certainly the chromebook so here you have to do some automatic translation you have to pull up the google browser and you have to google this what is the equivalent key for the chromebook that is the escape key on the pc right and then you google the answer what is the escape key on a uh, Chromebook? And then it says, well, you have to accept the full screen mode and access command line interfaces, and then, and so on and so forth. Okay, so then the Chromebook community is, uh, so then you have to kind of look, look, you know, look Google Chrome for the exit. Whenever I say escape key on the video, on the homework help video, using the downloadable version of Satis, you have to make the automatic translation to the escape key for the Chromebook if you're using Chromebook or to the escape key of a Mac if you're using a Mac, right? Then control V, it only takes control V to paste the data over. If you try to, so I have to hit escape key for fill view. If you try to go right click here, the paste command is whitened out. It's widened out for the online version of stat disk. 
So for those of you who are using Mac or Chromebook, the only thing you can do is to hit the equivalent key for Escape V, which for the MacBook is Command V, right? It's Command V. You have to do Command V every single time and say uh, uh, Control V. Okay. And then the Chromebook is something else. You have to Google it and you have to make that automatic translation. So that's one difference between the two programs. It's got all the same functionalities, except that they're kind of on the cutting and pasting, they're a little different. So right, right, right after they're paste different, paste into Zapdisk, and it's really fast, right? I mean, if you want to get the uh, Summary statistics, boom, that's it. You see how, how quick and simple it is to use that disk? Stack punch is a little more difficult. Okay, but but you see how how easy it is to to actually do this. So if you want to do a regression analysis, of course I'm not gonna get a perfect straight line here, but okay, but you know, it's it's that easy. I mean, you once you know the routine, you just go you go to it and um and that's it, you know. And so on and so forth. Use data, evaluate, you know, it's that quickly, that quick. So I want you to be using Zapdisk. Don't use Stack Punch. You see how quick and fast that is. On a test, you're on the time pressure. You want the fastest program around. Okay, so you want to use Zapdisk. That's another advantage of using Zapdisk. But the most major advantage is all the homework help videos use this program. Okay, that's why you want to use it. Okay, so now that is one, one you, you know, the control V doesn't, you know, the right click bringing up the pop-up menu and left clicking on paste doesn't work for the online version. It only works for the download version. That's one difference. The second difference is if you want to use any routine here, right? On the download version, you have uh, auto population. So you go data explore statistics. It's already thinking that you had cut and paste your data into column one. So it's already auto-populated for you. One is column one is already auto-populated for you. On the download version, not so nice. All right, data, explore data description statistics, same routine, but here there's no auto-population. You have to every single time you have to click on the pull-down menu and select the right column and then hit evaluate. Now the the answers are the same, right? I mean, if you compare the answers, hundred of mean, I mean, there's no difference between two programs, but there's all the population of columns for the download version. There isn't any for the online version. You have to click in the right column every single time. Yeah, that's the second thing. Second minor difference. The third minor difference is on the staff is if you want to go to a new problem, let's say that you're done with this problem, if you want to go to a new problem, you can either minimize this window and make it disappear from view, or you can downright close it, right? And then you hit clear, whatever, right? Clear, and then all the data will be clear, all right? Over on the online version, you cannot get rid of this window by just closing or minimizing it. You have to left-click on the, on, the, uh, on the address bar, Right, and get rid of everything after the slash, then hit enter to go back to the spreadsheet view. And then there you hit the clear button, clear okay, and you can also clear the data for the next problem to get ready for the next problem, okay? So then these are the three minor differences, and then there are additional translations on key names, right, that you will have to go through in order for you to get uh, to 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 go in between problems or to uh, populate your column heading and so on and so forth. And then the cutting and pasting of data from my stat lab to both programs, there's a little bit of minor difference there. Other than that, it's basically the same type of program. All right. So, uh, okay, that's a very, very major part. Now, if you don't use Zapdisk and you want to get through this class, you are going to suffer more difficulty, I'm pretty sure. And I don't think you really need it. I, mean, I think things are set up that if you go through the sequence as I've just suggested, that you should be able to do well and you should be able to learn statistics well in an applied fashion. Okay, now, 
And later on, I'm going to discuss, for those of you who want to get more in depth into the formulas, into understanding statistics, because you want to plan on going to graduate school, what kind of track, what kind of, there's still material to help you here, right? What I've just gone through stat this is, is, you know, if students don't want to understand the theory behind everything, just know how to solve statistics problems, they can go that way. All right, the next topic is on extra credit. I'm allowed by Kaiser University to give 2% extra credit for the whole course. It might not sound like a lot, but picture a student who's getting 88.26% as the only way to be. If she, he or she gets the full complement of the 2% extra credit, right, then it becomes 90.26%, and her, her or his grade now becomes an A instead of a B, you see? So 2% at the margin, 2% at the margin might make a lot of difference, might make a whole grace of difference. So I do encourage you to take these extra credits. Now, how do you get extra credit? It's underneath getting started, okay? Scroll down a little bit. You see bonus points here. Every week, right, when you attend the Kaiser Live session like these two students are doing, Chris and Heather, right? They get 100% bonus for week one. And every week then, since it's 2% over four weeks, every week a student is eligible to get half a percent of extra credit, right? And so now do they get 100% of that half percent or do they get a lower percentage, right? For each week, the bonus points are capped at 100%. You know, it doesn't do any student any good to get 120% extra credit per week. It'll just be capped at 100%, and he or she grabs that half a percent extra credit. Okay? So attending Kaiser Live sessions right there is 100%. Or if a student can't be there but emails me that he or she has watched the Kaiser Live recording, right? Uh, it's then a 75% for that week. And now, remember on the discussions, you know, to get the full complement of points per week, we have to post one main post and two replies, right? Any additional replies above two replies will get that student 25% bonus points per additional reply. So let's say that a student posts one main post and four replies for the week. Then the two replies are required for the discussion grade. She, he or she has posted two extra ones. Okay, so that's 25% times two. He or she gets that 50% bonus for that week. So a lot of times a student will view the Kaiser Live recording and then also post one extra post, 75% plus 25%. That's 100%, okay? So that's already good enough uh, uh, for them to get the full extra credit for the week. All right, for week one, we have two additional avenues, and it's only available for week one. For students who have posted an introduction, they will get 30% bonus for week one. And as we take a look at the introduction, many of you have already introduced yourself. Right, all of these are students are gonna get. Well, actually, this is the old web page, right, where I put all my videos in, and you'll see the same videos. But for our course web page, uh, about seven of you last time I checked uh, on on the introduction. Um, you know, uh, you know, post this before. First week, I see Heather's here. Now, Heather doesn't need it because Heather's actually he's got she's gotten one hundred percent from attending Kaiser Life Live. Uh, but you know, all these students are going to get thirty percent for posting an introduction. It's only available for week one. And also, if you have emailed me about a secondary contact, right? Maybe a secondary email, a private email, or your cell phone number, you know. Um, you also get 30% bonus. All that information will only be used for this course's 
communication only for that purpose, nothing else, okay? And then I don't keep them around. I just let the web pages expire and I and I just leave all the emails expire and I don't keep your secondary emails and cell phones at all. So don't worry about it. It's just for communicating this course. All right, so these are available for week one only, okay? All right, and uh, now, so that's how we get extra credit. For week one, we have some extra work. I'm gonna click on the week one folder. We have to do, so now we're underneath the week one folder. Now we're gonna scroll down vertically. We're gonna do the certification. Click on the words to, to launch it and click on begin. Basically, you say, well, I'm applied by Kaizen University's policy statement certification. This is basically just saying certifying that you do all your own work, or if it's not your own work, you give proper credit, right? So it's basically an academic honesty type of a, a promise to us that you'll do all your own work. So yes, whereas you can use any homework help notes, the hard copy notes, uh, to take them on the test, it's perfectly fine. You have to be writing those notes yourself. You can't get other people to do that for you, okay? So then save and submit, and then that will be okay. All right. And, yeah, and then that certification only takes about 10, you know, probably 30 seconds for you to do it most. And then we'll like you to do the pretest. Now, the pretest doesn't count for anything. It just gives us a pure measure as to how much statistics you know coming in the course, right? If you have already read the chapters, then you've actually – uh, it's not as exact a measure as it otherwise would have been. So please make sure that you don't have to study for it. You don't have to prepare for it. It doesn't count for anything. It just gives us an initial baseline as to how much statistics you know. And the difference between the post-test score and the pre-test score is how much you have improved over the course. Okay, we want that measure. So please go ahead and spend 30 minutes. It's just 30 minute time on this. Answer the best you can, but you don't have to prepare for it. In fact, it is more proper and better if you haven't prepared for that, for those weekly tests, okay? Uh, before you take the pretest. So of course, the post-test counts for 5% of your grade. You have to prepare for the post-test, but not the pretest. And then additionally, this is a strange online course, and therefore there's an additional item that we need to address. Is that you'll be spending most of your time in my stat lab for the first three and a half weeks. Then on the final and the post test, maybe you come to the Blackboard to watch the videos. Okay, that's okay. But because of that, and because it's hard for us to check attendance, you see these kinds of Blackboard pages belong to Kaiser University, but the my stat lab pages belong to Pearson. There's no way that we can actually monitor Pearson pages that closely because it's just not ours, right? So typically on an online course, we monitor how much time students spend on the Blackboard course web pages and how many clicks they've done to, uh, to look at their activity level, right? To gauge their activity levels. Over here, we must rely on your self-report. How much time have you spent on my stat lab? Because we don't monitor it well. So click on it for every week, click on this on every Saturday of the same week. So this coming Saturday, week one, begin. And you just basically checked all that applies here. There could be more than one check, right? I've been working on MSL homework this week. Uh, maybe I've completed it. Maybe I've even taken the first attempt. Check all that apply and then save and submit, right? And there's one of these every week. So here it's just a report on week one, on your week one my style app activity right here. Underneath week two is a similar, well, correspondingly identical my style app completion week two, click on that. And you do that uh, on a before, well, right on the Saturday night of the second week, right? So you do all of these on Saturday nights and then you do that for all four weeks. Now, the advantage of doing these and not skipping over them is that your campus dean will not, because of lack of Blackboard attendance hours and clicks, will not pull you out of the course. Because they saw, well, you haven't really attended the Blackboard course webpage that much. 
you haven't clicked on it that much. Uh, you must you must have been ghosting the calls. You must have been not attending the course at all, because uh, you know, uh, you know. And so I should pull you out of the course. But they won't do that if you actually do these my stat lab every week diligently, and that you attend the Blackboard course webpage moderately, right? Three days to post the three discussion threads, watch some of my videos that are underneath the announcements link and the Kaiser Live link, those the homework help videos. If you do that, then they won't pull you out of the class. Okay. So that's that's the idea. All right. Okay. Now um, let's get back to helping some of the students. Some of you might experience delay in receiving a textbook, right? And uh, so what you want to do is you want to register for my style app as, as as fast as you can, okay? And once you uh, once you have um, register for it, right? Then you are you can get inside the the course web page. There's an electronic textbook that you can get to, so you can use an e-textbook right now if you don't have the physical textbook, okay? So now you're inside the Pearson My Stat Lab page. Click on the e-text contents on the left-hand side, right? We'll begin with chapter eight, right? And maybe section 8.1 after you click on, click on section 8.1, then come back up top here and click on view the e-text. And then the electronic textbook will show up, all right? Um, if you, right? So this electronic textbook is in every way identical to your physical textbook. If you want to page up then hit the right word pointing arrow, if you want to page back, hit the leftward pointing arrow. If you want to scroll through the page, use the vertical bar. But let's say on some of the homework help videos, I say, let's go to page 686. Well, you don't want to be clicking 300 times just to get to it, right? So click on this page number in the middle. Hit backspace to get rid of it. Let's say 686. And now after you type in 686, page 686, hit enter. And then you'll be sent to page 686. Ah, runs test. That's the very last section of the entire course, right? It determines whether a sequence of results are random or not random, man-made, right? Very interesting. All right. But anyway, <clears throat> there is this e-text inside that actually would help you, okay, on you know, tie you over until your physical textbook arrives, okay? All right, so it's inside Pearson. So Pearson, as you pay the money from uh, to register, you also get that electronic textbook. All right, now last but not least, we have encounter, we've talked about basically all topics. How do you succeed in this course and how do you study for it at a deeper level, especially when you're, pretty much interested, maybe you're very interested in statistics. A lot of you who are gonna go and do research, especially when you go into some kind of a PhD program, when they when you have to work with data to prove your theories, uh, research methods and statistics is one of your minors. You know, minor, and you, your PhD minor is in there. So you need to know a lot of statistics. Probably you'll be taking graduate courses, PhD in psychology, PhD in nursing, whatever, whatever, et cetera. PhD in information technology, management, whatever. Business management, PhD in business management. I was in one. And uh, they, they make you take a lot of statistics. Um, or your statistics major flat out, or you you want to go into data science. Yeah, you will be taking a lot more statistics. And then I strongly encourage you to take up this track of the course, all right? So how do you, in general, succeed in this class? <clears throat> the first thing you do is you must read the textbook, right? You have no lectures to go to. The only place where you get the context of what, what you're dealing with, what kind of statistical objects you're dealing with, what do they represent, what kind of operations are allowed on what kind of operations are disallowed on it? 
the only place where you get that information is through the reading, right? So read the textbook first. While you're reading the textbook, okay, you want to mark down the places where you need further help on. Nobody can expect you to understand this difficult course, everything in it, upon the first pass, upon the first reading, okay? So now they're going to be embedded helps throughout this course webpage to help you understand the concepts and also how to do the problem solving, all right? Whereas for the problem solving part, I already showed you that I've homework help videos, uh, but we'll, we'll get there later. But let's, let's, let's figure out the, the correct sequence, all right? If you want to understand it in depth or if you want to work with formulas, whatever you want to do, okay? First thing is read the textbook, mark down the sections that you need further help on. Then go to your first line of help. Underneath each one of the weekly folders, you click on week one, for example, right? Scroll all the way down to the very bottom. Are these concept clarification word documents that I've written? These word documents are written <clears throat> on purpose different from your textbook author. You already read the textbook, right? Let's say you didn't get 10 sections of it, 10 concepts you need further help on, okay? Well, it's not very useful if I give you help materials that just regurgitate what the textbook does, right? Just do identically what he does, the Triola does, right? So these are kind of like a different take. These are the concept clarification help documents. There's one of them underneath each week is your first line of help. All the sections there are underlined and in bold letters, okay, what, what each of the topic is about. So let's say that you have 10 sections and now you're going to go through all of this and you only want to find the 10 sections to read on. Why? You've already read the chap chapters, right? Those other things you understand is these 10 sections that you don't understand, okay, do not make the mistake of trying to read this whole thing, okay? It's it it just be a waste of your time, right? It's 32 pages long, right? Before, you know, ahead of time, I don't know which student needs help over which section, 42 pages, okay? So I'm not going to be able to predict which student needs help over which section, so I have to be encyclopedic about it. I have to kind of cover just most of the major concepts there, right? And so it's long, right? You've already read the textbook and now you have to reread this thing. It's going to take up all your time. It's a mistake to try to read the whole thing. Identify just the 10 sections that you need further help on. Go to those 10 sections, read it, and it's intentionally a little different from how Triola puts it most of the time. So hopefully between my perspective and Triola's perspective, those two can help you understand some of the concepts. So maybe the 10 sections now uh, that you need further help on are down to six after you've gone through it, right? So there's one of these Word documents over every week, all right? Over every week, all right. So now you still have those six that you're stuck in. What's the second line of help? The second line of help are going to be on lecture videos lecturing on the same subjects in the order by which the word concept clarification help documents are written. Okay, where are they located? They're all located inside this course expectations document. Remember I sent it to you last Saturday outlining your responsibilities and the preferred schedule on how to achieve them, right? That's my first part of that letter from me to you. All right, is this work? And this is uh, underneath the week one folder, right? Also underneath the week one folder. After I've signed my name, okay, down here, you, know, you, got, you got the dates and the preferred schedule on achieve them, right? After I sign my name at the beginning of these help videos, Okay, the second line of help are these concept clarification documents, okay, all right, that are here. Concept videos are here, right? Let's go down, and you would then select these videos, 
select the URL, right click on them, copy, and open up a Google Chrome browser. It's important that you open up Google Chrome browser. You see, I used to use Blackboard Collaborate <laughs> before they start using all my videos and I have to make the videos over again, right? So Blackboard Collaborate videos are only guaranteed to work underneath the Google Chrome browser. So you have to go open up a Google Chrome browser, hit Control V, select the URL, put in the address line, hit Enter, okay? And now the video starts loading. These are the lecture videos lecturing the concept clarification documents in the order by which okay, they started recording. This is average. One is, of course, not important. okay. They're, it's lecturing on the concept clarification documents topics in the order by which they're written. And because of that, you know how to slide forward and backwards to get to the right spots, right? And you, once again, it's encyclopedic. You don't want to watch the whole thing, it's six hours. <laughs> It's six hours of video for just one week, okay? Do not try to view the whole thing. View just the parts that you need further help on, okay? So then, you know, hopefully viewing this, but instead of just seeing words, you see yours truly coming in, talking about it. I start using the whiteboard drawing pictures on it. I slow things down when things get tough and deliberately fast when things are not so tough. So it's it's kind of like um, a more, uh, hopefully it would be more understandable so with the pictures and the drawing with the emphases that I use with the circling and highlighting and all those kinds of things. It's, it's more understandable. So then you view just those six topics, right? Find the six topics and view them. And then you would be, maybe now your misunderstanding is down to, uh, two, right? So it helps another four. Okay, so that's the second line of help is to um, watch these videos, concept clarification videos. Here, all right. The third line of help. Okay, so so for the second line of help, let's go back. To second line of help, just the concept clarification videos here. There is the one that is for the thirteenth edition. Okay, which are here, and then there are those who. <clears throat> Um, and, and they're right here on the concepts, right? It's all the way here through here, concept verifications. Then the third line of help are on how to use stat disk to solve your chapter example problems. So you're reading a lot of chapters and there are these examples there, right? If you understand how to do all the chapter example problems, it's, it will go a long way through your understanding of the homework. Right, so this is even before you do the homework, and then you that's the 14th edition using stat disk uh, to do the chapter 8, 9, 10, 12, and 13 example problems. And hopefully, after you view them, uh, you understand just about everything. Okay, in case you don't, I'm your human backstop, you email me, you text me asking me for help on some particular problem. Now, there are those of you still using the 13th edition, right? So then the examples in there are a little different, 14th edition. And I've kept these examples videos for the 13th edition as well. Okay, and they're here, right? And so in case you're using the 13th edition to a textbook, not the 14th, your third line of help using Statis and helping you solve the chapter example problems here. Okay, all right. So that's basically the third line of help. And hopefully after that, you are you understand everything. I mean, you don't, if there's a couple of things that you don't understand, time to email me on the human backstop, I'll help you out, okay? And then there are these quiz videos. You don't have any quizzes at all for this course. But these are quiz videos that are kind of like example questions on the kind of test questions. If you kind of want to go through there and try to understand how to use the stat this program a little more on some quiz, you know, test like questions, you're welcome to view them. These are kind of like a supplementary help for it does a couple of things. It helps you diagnose word problems that are going to be the test problems, kind of like similar to test problems. 
And then it helps familiarize you even further with the Staptis program. Okay. So then these are the quiz help videos. I wouldn't call this a, a line of help. Uh, they're kind of supplementary. Okay. And all of that is located underneath the course expectations document that I emailed you on Saturday. And it's also permanently embedded underneath the week one folder. Okay. Week one. Right. And then scroll all the way down the bottom course expectations. All right. So then these are some of the help videos. Then the problem solving videos, I already kind of showed it to you. They are the homework help videos. But th there's a different set of videos there. All right. They're also called concepts. Maybe it's abuse of language there. I'm using the same term for two different meanings. <laughs> but uh, I think I think you understand. All right. So there's a concept clarification videos. But on the underneath the analysis, like remember, that's where you would find all the homework help videos using stat disk to solve an homework help problem, sometimes itself, right? But at the same time, there are concepts videos, not so much during week one. Week one is straight up chapter eight, stat disk problem solving, chapter nine, stat disk problem solving. And because many of you have taken SDA 2023 and you've done chapter eight already, right? But then week two, on the more difficult chapter 10, you see that the first part one and part two are kind of like concepts videos, but they're not concept verification videos as much as concepts on how to solve problems type of videos, right? So it's got a problem solving bend to it instead of having a purely conceptual bending to it. That That is, that is the... Uh, uh, first line, second line, third line of help in understanding the subject. Okay, these are these are these are concepts videos, all right, but they're they are geared towards problem solving, conceptual underpinnings on how to on, on how to solve problems here. So then you have two of these before you get to the part three video, how to use that is to do chapter ten, chapter twelve, same thing. You know, videos on concepts on chapter twelve, concepts of thirteen with a problem solving bend to it. Before we get to part three, where you use that is to do the week three homework. Okay. And now week four concepts videos, once again, with a problem solving bend to it before we get to the actual homework problem solving. So you do have two sets of, you have the concepts, concepts videos, and then you have concepts on how to solve problems at the videos. And they're all there for you. This is kind of like the fourth line to help here. Uh, to actually help you solve problems, okay? So how do you succeed in the course? Read your chapters, you have no lectures to go to. Crucial that you do that. I can give you all kinds of help, right? But if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's gonna go right through everybody, right? Right through those people who haven't. So you have to read the chapters to understand what kind of things you're doing, what the context are, right? And if you wanna uh, know it on a deep level, go through the concept clarification the concepts help the uh, the three lines of help there before you come to the problem solving. For those of you who just want to learn how to solve statistics problems, uh, you still have to read the chapters. But if you you if you don't go through the three lines of help, you read the chapters and you want to. I mean, you can go through the the concepts help the three lines of help a little bit. You don't have to do it exhaustively. That's why I mean. I mean Sometimes it's still necessary for you to understand what you're dealing with, but go through the, the three lines of concept help, but you don't have to do it exhaustively, right? But those of you who try to go to graduate school or you want to get your PhD degree, you want to do it exhaustively, okay? So then, so then you, you have to study, you know, and understand a subject, go through the three lines of help until you're down to zero as far as you're misunderstanding those. Now, those of you who are learning it in applied way, you can still do that. There's not, no, I mean, if you want to spend time at it, you can still do it, right? But you'll be doing more of this. Proportionally, you'll be on this web page. You'll spend more time on this web page than on the three lines of help type web page, right? So, yes, read the chapters, mark down section if you understand. Go through the three lines to help to, to understand the concepts. If you don't understand it, send me an email if you want to find out, and I'll help you. And then, and then 
go through these homework help videos, right? That helps you push your homework grades up to 100% or so. Take the hard copy notes, the screenshots, and step-by-step -step instructions to prepare for tests. Take tests, get the good scores. And after you put up one good score in this course, you'll begin to develop confidence in this method, in this sequence of actions, okay? And then just cookie cutter the same approach to the rest of the weeks. And you can actually put up good test scores every week that pretty soon you're going to get out of here with a good grade, okay? Okay, that's the idea. All right, I think I've just said all the things that I need to say. Chris and Heather, please stick around. I'm going to give you the 100% bonus right now. But do you have any questions? Heather, do you have any questions? Not at the moment. If I do, I'll email you. Okay, I'm going to give you 100% bonus here for attending Week One Kai's Alive. Remember, Thank every you. week that you attend, you get that half of some extra credit right away for that week. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, all right, Heather, don't hesitate to, to get in contact with me. I'm just here to help, right? I'm just here to help you. Don't be afraid to get in contact with me. So Heather, uh, bonus week one, right? It's 100%. Okay. And Chris, 100%. Yeah, Do have, you have any questions? I don't have any questions right now. No. Okay, I have given you your bonuses for attending Kaiser Live. Thank you very much. And uh, to everybody else, thanks for watching. Remember, this this will set you up. Do exactly what this video says. It will set you up for the entire course for success. And you will also learn a lot of statistics as well. Okay? All right, thanks for watching. Bye.